what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here this is going to be the review for halloween 6 the curse of michael myers halloween 6 the curse of michael myers was released in 1995 a few years after uh halloween the revenge of michael myers as far as like who's returned the only returning cast member from what i can recall is donald pleasance this was his last film in fact so may his soul rest in peace um I feel like without Donald Pleasance and like the future entries, I think that's what's really lacking because he was such a big staple. So when he wasn't in any more of the sequels, I think that kind of lowered the uh, quality of them. That's just me personally. This movie came out in 1995 and was directed by Joe Chappelle. Uh, it stars Donald Pleasance, Paul Rudd, Mitchell Ryan, Kim Darby, uh, Keith Bogart, and J.C. Brandy, who replaces our... Uh, Daniel Harris. Daniel Harris did not return for this movie. I think it was because of pay cuts. And George P. Wilbur, he returns again as Michael Myers. Uh, this movie is five years or six years after Halloween 5. And there's two cuts. There's a producer's cut and there's the theatrical cut. This movie as a whole is not going to make any sense no matter which cut you watch. You'll have people that will try to defend it up until the day that they die. This movie does not make sense. And if you are pulling, you, if you're pulling things that are not given on screen you're just trying to make sense of it so that's you further proving that there's not anything being presented on the screen for you to actually make sense of the story so as a whole the narrative doesn't make sense this movie tries to explain all the stuff that was brought in in halloween 5 is as regards to the uh, man in black we find out who the man in black is and it was none other than dr win now if that is uh like if you if you have never seen this movie you're listening to this review and you've seen like let's say you've seen previous halloween films you're gonna see dr win and you're gonna be taken back if you go back and you re-watch the first film dr win was the was this minor character that dr loomis was talking to at the very beginning in one of the earlier scenes after michael had just escaped so for this film to come out and have dr win be the man in black and then on top of that the man in black is also exposed as being the person in charge of everything he's the one in control of michael myers so now what we have here is we have a character in michael myers who's been led to who's been presented in such a in such a negative light he's been the central villain of this whole narrative now with halloween six we're like no no michael's innocent someone's controlling him and he's being he's a pawn in this whole grand scheme for this cult that wants all this stuff in regards to the cult of thorn that's what's going on in this movie michael is under the control of a curse it's never explained how exactly this curse works how why they chose michael uh there's a kid in the film because another person the main our final girl our final girl in this movie her name is karen strode she's played by marianne hagan she has a son in the film named danny he for some reason is hearing a voice and we find out later in the film that michael myers also heard a voice from a character who lied saying that she was babysitting him that night that he killed his sister uh no you weren't because i didn't see you where were you at i don't recall a babysitter if you were babysitting then you definitely did a terrible job and i can imagine why you never babysat again after that uh it's just the film tries to basically say that michael myers is under control of this this cult and the problem here is see this is the stuff that no one thinks about because everyone sits down and they just watch film with their brains shut off uh why was michael gone for six years what were they doing with him for six years jamie jamie the character of jamie she gets the disrespect treatment the same way rachel got at the beginning of halloween 5 jamie's killed at the very beginning of this of this movie so yet again another, another beloved character is just killed off right after i think that was also one of the reasons why daniel harris did not want to come back because the writers for this movie they wanted to get rid of that character for some strange reason they did not want jamie lloyd to be a piece of, of like a major factor of this story when she has been like the crucial ingredient for the entire trilogy so why close the trilogy and axe out your main ingredient that's like the that's like if the scream trilogy the original three scream films let's say the opening kill in scream three was sydney prescott but then in the rest of the movie we just find out stuff about sydney prescott well why kill her off at the beginning of the movie why not just save that until the very end so yet again another character that fans have become invested in they get the disrespect 
treatment at the beginning of this movie and Jamie Lloyd is killed in the most disrespectful way that you can kill a beloved character. Um, the kills Michael Myers does in this movie, they're very gruesome and some of the best kills in the series. Uh, as far as like how Haddonfield looks, I think this is the best Haddonfield has looked as far as like the leaves and the overall mood and the way it just it embodies that essence of Halloween. Uh, I think this is the best Haddonfield has looked in regards to setting the proper tone for fall and the uh, Halloween season. I think I think the scenery and everything in regards to that was amazing. Several things don't make sense in the movie as far as, again, why was Michael gone for six years? There's a scene where Paul Rudd's character, Tommy, he goes into the uh, train station. There's a trail of blood that leads to the infant that Jamie had left behind the night prior while she was on the run from Michael Myers. This trail of blood, Paul Rudd seems to be the only person who noticed this trail of blood. And the baby is in the bathroom, mind you. So anyone who's actually watching with their brain turned on should be asking, why did no one else come down here and find this child? Why did the custodians not find this trail of blood? Why is he the first person to notice this trail of blood and just acknowledge the fact that it exists and follows it down to find this infant. And are you telling me that no one else went down into that restroom? And was this infant not crying, purposely waiting for Tommy to arrive? Like, like silly stuff like that. Everything seems very forced. It's just not, it's just very ignorant to me for a movie to be so, like it feels very forced. Uh, and then you go back to the, the cult. Again, we don't know why. When you introduce this cult, you're taking away what the whole purpose of this whole entire character with Michael Myers is. He's supposed to be the absence of motive, the absence of emotion. He's not supposed to be anything. He's just supposed to be pure evil. As far as I'm concerned, when you introduce a, another grand scheme involving a cult that has to do with Michael Myers being controlled by them, you now have diminished everything that was originally intended for this character. Uh, you've already answered the question of whether he was supernatural or not, something that, again, was not supposed to be answered. It was supposed to be left up for the audience to interpret. But as the series progressed, they just decided to answer that question and establish that, yes, he is supernatural. And in this movie, it goes against what the whole intent of it was by actually giving him a motive. He still does not have a motive, really, because he's not even the one in control, apparently. So yet again, we have a villain who now is no longer a villain per this storyline because we find out that he's under control and that there's someone out there that's much worse than him. It's just, and if the narrative had made more sense, maybe I would have been more inclined to like this movie a bit better, but still it's going against what the original ingredients were and it's taking Michael Myers and making him kind of an afterthought because he's not the end all be all as far as like the big bad is concerned for the overall narrative. He's just a pawn in a grand scheme of things. And that's something that I feel is very ignorant as far as like just crafting a successful Michael Myers movie. Donald Pleasance, I think he's the only redeeming quality in this movie. Dr. Wynn being the man in black, I think that's absolutely ignorant. I think the whole existence of the man in black is stupid. A minor character who was present in one little scene in the original film gets brought back and is revealed to be the mastermind behind everything that's very ignorant. There's nothing even in the rest of the films that indicates that he's in control. That's why stuff like that is very, it just feels forced. There's nothing, if you go back and re-watch re this, re-watch re the series, there is nothing that will indicate that that is where this was going because like I said before, there's a lack of a consistent creative team. Nothing as far as like Michael Myers or Dr. Loomis saying one time, maybe someone around here gave him lessons and Dr. Wynn was there when he said that. So with this information that we find out here, perhaps Dr. Wynn was the one giving him lessons. But this whole cult thing, if I'm not mistaken, is at the, is, it's at the very bottom of the sanitarium itself, Smith's Grove. So again, why is all of, it's just, it's just very mind numbing to sit down and try to understand all of this, especially when the film isn't giving you a lot to go with because certain things don't make sense. Um, as far as like again the cult where did this baby come from and then another thing if because what we find out is that michael has to kill his bloodline to break the curse if michael has to break the curse by killing his entire bloodline uh for those who watch the producer's cut this film hints at the fact that myers was the one who got jamie lloyd pregnant so if his whole intent or purpose is to kill his bloodline 
why did he get Jamie pregnant? That's the biggest plot hole in the entire franchise. You'll have people who don't care about that though because they watch films mindlessly and they're not educated on the Michael Myers character or what John Carpenter and Deborah Hill had originally intended. Some of them aren't even aware of the fact that Michael Myers wasn't even supposed to go on this long. Michael Myers, the original Halloween, was supposed to be a one and done film. And you'll get these people that constantly try to defend the crap out of Halloween 6 because they're so ignorant as to what is actually going on and they have no idea what is actually supposed to be occurring and how each sequel continue to further step away from the purpose of Michael Myers. It's supposed to be grounded in the fact that he is the essence of evil. How is he the essence of evil if someone else is controlling him? It's not, he's not the essence of evil, the people controlling him are. And then on top of that, he's not even the villain anymore. He's now an innocent victim in all of this because he is just a puppet in someone else's mind games and their own personal fun. It's just very frustrating to sit here and debate how Halloween 6 is one of the worst films in the series and then you have people who will come out and defend it as if it's one of the better ones. It's not because it's going against the whole original intent of the character. It's introducing plot devices that make absolutely no sense in the end. It tries and again like I said before these are brand new writers. This is not the same team that did Halloween 5. So Halloween 5 left behind a mess and then the Halloween 6 crew had to come in and they did the best they could to try to make sense of it. And I applaud them for that. But again, this all goes back to Halloween 5. Halloween 5 is the film that actually paved the way for those movies that a lot of people do not like. You have Halloween Resurrection, uh, the Rob Zombie films. Anytime you think about the fact that you hate those movies, I want you to go back and realize that that all started because of Halloween 5 and the idiotic writing that went into Halloween 5. That's why Halloween H2O completely ignored the whole Thorn trilogy because the Thorn trilogy ended with, it started off with promise at the end of Halloween 4 and then 5 and 6 just completely neglected to make anything of that significant ending that we got in Halloween 4 and they just went ahead and did their own thing. I personally do like this movie again because I enjoy all the Michael Myers films, but this is not a good movie by any means. Uh, it's not a complete horrible film, but it's not good either. I would say I give it the same thing as Halloween 5, a 5.5 out of 10, 5.5 out of 10 for me. Uh, the acting was fine. And another thing that did not make any sense, the wife in this movie is the most idiotic person. It's just like the writing, the writing in this movie makes zero sense. They live, the family that lives in this house, the Myers house, they're relatives of the Strode family. So they're relatives of Lori Strode. The family apparently did not know that they lived in the Myers house. How did you not know that you lived in the Myers house if that's the house that your husband's brother was trying to sell like just little things like that and then we see that they're always getting things left on their lawn that obviously would that should send off red flags to anyone in the house the wife didn't know that it was the myers house uh the only person who knew it was the myers house was the husband now i understand they they've never lived there before but when you arrive places and you go into a house like that, especially one with so much history and the legacy of it, it's it's completely idiotic that you lived here. And it's not it's never addressed how long they've been here. So they probably were here a short period of time. But even then to move into a house and the only person who knew of its history was your husband and you never you were completely oblivious to it. That's very that's just it's just idiotic writing. It makes absolutely no sense how none of them knew that this was the Myers house. That's very ignorant. Again, and then the whole thing about Michael Myers was hearing a voice. So Dr. Wynn was sneaking into Myers house and throwing his voice around. First of all, how is he making his voice sound like that? Because there's an instance in the movie where you can hear him sound in a different way. How is Dr. Wynn making his voice sound like that? Is he playing a tape recorder or something? What is he doing? And then he comes and goes in Danny's room if that was Dr. Wynn, how did he get inside Danny's house? How was he gone so fast? And how, like just like just no, stuff no one cares about because everyone just watches movies with their brains turned off. If Dr. Wynn was the one in Danny's room and then we're told that he was the one doing this to Michael, 
how was he getting into Michael's room at night as well? And just how was he even getting in contact with Michael? Like just questions that do not never get answered. And it's just stuff like that that doesn't make sense in the overall grand scheme of things in regards to this movie. But people will constantly defend it because they just are so closed minded and don't want to hear anything about plot holes or anything like that. Oh, all movies have plot holes. Yes, all movies have plot holes, but that doesn't mean that all movies that doesn't mean that the movie doesn't have to make some sense. This movie makes no sense. It's like literally grounded in nonsense. There's no sense to this movie. Uh, that is my review on Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Oh, and another thing, the mask is absolutely trash. Michael Myers' mask in this movie, it is garbage. That is my a final thought on Halloween 6, uh, The Curse of Michael Myers, or the garbage of Michael Myers, as I put it. Uh, five and a half out of 10. If you guys enjoyed this review, give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video uh in the description i'll have links to all my social media accounts on my facebook twitter and instagram uh, also down in the comment section i will leave links to my articles again that i've had published i'll have links to jeepers creepers 4 news screen 5 and the chucky series and some halloween 3 news with david gordon green and jamie lee curtis um, with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video